I just thought I would take this opportunity to pay tribute to Yusef Latif, who passed on this week. Um, I feel a connection to him because uh, he's he spent the later part of his career um, teaching at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, uh, Massachusetts, and he um, I think he also taught at Hampshire College, um, and and that area is where I'm from. And he was kind of I think kind of considered the godfather of uh, this music in that particular area and he taught a lot of people that were influential in my life uh, unfortunately I didn't really study with him because I think at the time um, that I had that opportunity I I kind of had this attitude of like well you know I'm just trying to figure out how to play this music like and and you know all the stories I would always hear about him it was always these complex ideas that these um, these guys he knew were working on and I just was like, oh, I'm not ready for all that, you know, so, but uh, I will show one musical concept that was passed down to me from him um, that I, that I, um, I still apply actually to this day. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to start by talking about a couple records that he was involved in that were pretty influential in my life. The first one is this one here, the Cannonball Adderley Sextet, uh, live in New York, and I think this is probably considered a jazz classic at this at this point i mean it's such a strong album and actually has one of um yousef's uh, earlier compositions on the record which is uh pretty interesting to think of that going down in a in a jazz club somewhere um and if you listen to it you'll you'll know what i mean it's it's very uh, somewhat experimental i'd say um and you know as a young kid i i, I had no idea that jazz had that broader range of uh of sound quite frankly all right in this record here the tenors of Yusef Latif and Archie Shep this is an important album for me um, this is actually released on Yusef Latif's um, own record label and at the time that it came out I was actually a student of Archie Shep's um, so I was pretty excited to to get this um, this is kind of a hard to find record but it features um, Steve McRaven on drums who was a local guy and now lives in France, and he actually gave me my first um, jazz record when I was a young guy. And uh, Tom McClung, who used to be a local guy, and he lives in France now, and he, to this day, is still one of the best piano players I've ever heard. And uh, Avery Sharp is on bass here, and Avery used to play with um, the McCoy Tyner Trio for a long time, and he's definitely one of my favorite bass players ever. Um, so this is such an interesting record because... Um, in terms of personalities, I mean, you cannot be more polar opposite than Yusef Latif and Archie Shep, just in demeanor and perspective, worldview, and it definitely, you know, comes out in this album. Um, now, I mean, these two records I just showed you, these are like records that have sentimental value to me, you know, so I, I you know, someone who's a real connoisseur of Yusef Latif's um, recorded work, you know, um, should really... Um, add something to the conversation in terms of pointing out what they think his seminal recorded works are. Um, so, you know, feel free to leave comments and uh, suggestions. Um, I think that would be really helpful because these are just uh, personal to me. You know, you always hear these stories about um, jazz legends, you know, and they usually focus on, you know, some eccentricity uh, or some burning thing they did on the bandstand and um, you know, certainly there were a lot of stories like that about Yusef that I heard, but the story th that I want to share that I heard from one of his students um, w was actually something different than that. And um, it, it was from an associate of mine that I knew that was studying with Yusef. And I would, I would describe this individual as pretty ignorant about a lot of things, um, to put it mildly. 
And he told me he was alone with Yusuf in his lesson, and they got into some conversation about Islam. And uh, this guy started saying some pretty pejorative things and bringing up Farrakhan and all this kind of stuff. I was really embarrassed when he was telling me the story. Um, but he said to me that Yusuf looked at him with such compassion, kind of stopped what they were doing, and started to share with him um, the story of his his spiritual life, you know. Um, and it was like this moment that was beyond tolerance because I think tolerance is kind of a cynical concept. Like, uh, he, he just continued to teach, but it wasn't, it wasn't music at that point. It was, it was a life lesson. And, you know, I can tell you from knowing <laughs> this individual that, you know, this is probably the deepest, uh, thoughts that he's ever had to confront, you know, and, and he had, he had told me, yeah, that conversation like changed my view of the world, you know? And I think about that story um, a lot, and I've had some, uh, I've had to confront some intolerance in in my professional life and otherwise. And I always think of that story and and think about um, um when that situation occurs, what is your responsibility, and is there an opportunity to sort of uh, transcend that moment? You know, so I thought that was a beautiful story, and it, that story had much more of an effect on me than. Um, any of the, um, oh, he was playing giant steps at three, 350 BPMs, you know? So I thought I would share that. Okay. So what we're looking at now is the repository of scales and melodic patterns, um, by Yusef Latif. And this is, this is an incredibly daunting piece of work, uh, to, to confront. And, uh, I'm just going to show you, uh, one scale that somebody showed me years ago that came out of this book. Um, and I'll show you um, the various applications because I, I never forgot them showing me this and and I still use it. It still creeps into my playing all the time. Okay. All right. So here's the scale. It's a it's a, obviously a pentatonic scale and um, it's some kind of Japanese pentatonic scale apparently. Um, and so someone showed me this, like I said, like years ago and it's just stuck with me. So I'm just going to demonstrate it a little bit for you and talk about some of its applications. All right, I'll start by just simply demonstrating the scale on the guitar so you can hear the sound. All right, so I've located the page in the repository in which uh, the scale is actually demonstrated. So the next thing I'll do is I'll just show you um, some of the patterns that he demonstrates here. And I'll just play through the page, but I'll stop at um, the end of each pattern. And I'll do it very slowly so you can get the sound in your ear. All right, now we're going to apply the scale harmonically. Um, my favorite chord to play this over is a minor 7 flat 5. So think like, you know, Stella by Starlight. All right, so since we know that it works over minor 7 flat 5, it's obviously going to work over all the chords in the F major scale. So let's go through those. F major. Now G minor. A minor. B flat. Um, C7. Um, you know, let's connect the arpeggio to the scale here. C7. 
see how that works. And then, um, let's see, uh, D minor, D natural minor in this case. And then back to E minor 7.5.5. All right, so now let me show you some other uses. This is a E7 flat 9. And then I like to use it on this. This is um, A7. Sharp 5 flat 9. That's what that is. Okay. All right. Um, I don't really want to make this about my playing. Uh, what I'm trying to do is just uh, influence you to become aware of Yusef and his contributions to this music. Um, so I'll just leave you with one lick that would reflect my um, application of this. And that's just, um, you know, kind of chromaticizing the scale. Um, and if, if, if anyone wants me to do a lesson on this, we'll do it at another time. Um, but I hope that you um, explore Yusef's music and some of his concepts and um, are able to have a, a relationship with his music. Um, so thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.